and it's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. This round, Moto America Superbikes at Road America from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, our third round of nine for 2023. Coming at you from the famed and freshly paved Road America. Uh, what a day we have for racing. The sun is shining. The crowd has showed up in the thousands as we set the stage for Super Sport race number one. Welcome everyone to the broadcast. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White, staying alongside two-time world champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, so far in Super Sport, this next generation Super Sport, it's all been Chavi Forez. He's won three races, but we've had one race that was double points, so he's got maximum of 100 points. Yeah, and I don't think that tells the whole story. I mean, Chavi Forez is world-renowned. He's been a world superbike. He's very well-traveled. I don't think anybody is surprised that he's done what he has done so far. So here in Supersport, we're under Next Generation Rules, our second year, something that's happened in World Supersport as well. And one of the biggest news items to come out of the weekend is the fact that Moto America Tech has basically balanced the motorcycles. So we want to give you a little graphic, take a look at, at what we're looking at here. When we talk about this, it is basically this. The Yamaha R6 has been the benchmark, Jason, mm -hmm. for performance based off of what it did in World Supersport, the dominant bike. Now you have different configurations, larger motorcycles. So here, beginning at Road America, Road America balanced the Ducati Panigale V2 and the Suzuki GSX-R750. Left unchanged of homologated motorcycles is the Kawasaki ZX-6R, the MV Augusta, the GSX-R600 Triumph Street Triple. So Jay, when we look at this and we say, okay, these bikes are balanced, what is that really, what are we talking about? Well, they're, they're trying to make it to where we have a lot of uh, different diversity in the, in the field itself. And when you look at what they've done, we have four bikes in the first four places here. So all the brands are very well represented and what Moto America has been trying to do is something that they've been trying to do globally. 600s, they wanted to create a new class, not kind of a new class, but new generation of rules for this class so other bikes and other manufacturers could get involved. And I think they've done a really good job so far. And the third member of our broadcast team is Hannah Lope, and she had a chance to give us more information about this balancing. Here's Hannah. For the Super Sport class with the next generation bike comes a new set of next generation rules, and there have been some changes made. I'm here with Teague Dane, Moto America's technical director, to give us a little bit more insight. What are the changes that have been made that will be enforced starting this weekend, and what was the reasoning behind that? So we analyze data off of all the bikes over over a period of time so we've looked at all the rounds and we decided it was time to make a competitive adjustment to the motorcycles to try to keep parity between all the bikes the last time we made adjustment on the ducati was daytona of 2022 and then the last time adjustment on the suzuki had been road america of last year for the super sport next gen bikes we have a spec ecu that controls the motorcycle um, within that, we, we, can, we can control the power in multiple different ways. So we've made some small adjustments to move the power around on each bike. Some that I've talked to say they can feel it, some say they can't. So, so far it's looked pretty good though on the sheets. We'll see how things shake out come race time. And I think one thing to remember, of course, is there's a lot of different characteristics of doing a fast lap. There's acceleration, there's that mid-range punch, there's top end, all kinds of stuff. But Jason, here at Road America, as we take a look at the track map, it is a spectacular place to really capitalize on top speed. But Jay, this four mile road course, we showed up and all of a sudden we arrived to a billiard smooth racetrack. I mean, absolutely perfect, Greg. My opinion, best track in the country by far. And it just it got a lot better now. So they're going to see him charge down into turn one, up over a little rise, down into turn three. Then a big, uh, big long straightaway there, Greg, where you're going to see them start heading back downhill into famous turn five. We've seen so much action there over the years under the Corvette bridge in turn six, through fast turn seven in the Kettle Downs area. Takes you all the way to the famous carousel here at Road America, turns nine and ten into the chicane. After that chicane, you're bombing down into Canada Corner, turn 12, where more action will be. This was a place that I felt when I rode here just a few days ago, Greg. It's so much better, so much smoother. It creates more passing. Up the hill through 13, into 14, and you want to get the best drive you can to go up that big steep hill. And hopefully you get to that checkered flag first. This track was last paved in 1995. And so everybody showed up, and it's like a new racetrack. New brake markers, smooth pavement, but this guy right here, Chavi Forez, he showed up and he loved it straight away. We're going to see if he can get another race win under his belt.
Well, Chavi does come in here certainly on an incredible hot streak, uh, but there have been riders who have answered the call here a little bit, of course, and uh, one of them up on the pole. But uh, Joshua Hayes here, number four. Josh Hayes, one of the legends, four-time Superbike champion, uh, getting the nod earlier this year. The Squid Hunter team saying, you know, let's do this full season. Let's you know get you into a championship battle, get you maybe that 87th uh, record-breaking win. But uh, they had a little problem in the first qualifying session, rebounded smartly with a great run in the second qualifying, and and brought him up to the inside of that second row. Yeah, and for him, I think he made one of the biggest jumps from yesterday yeah. to today. And, and like you said, he's chasing that record. And I think now that they know that he's in for the whole year, he can kind of, you know, really focus and attack the season as a full season. Not, well, I don't know when my next one is. And also, um, you know, just for him with the new rules and stuff, should probably help him a little bit as well. And uh, the number 23 of Anthony Maziato, and that's the Northeast Cycle Outlet Yamaha. We've seen real flashes of pace from him in the past, but this year, every venue, he has been right there. And he's one of the guys who's been very quick here this weekend. Yeah, very quick this weekend. And it's like everything changed for him at, at Barber. You know, that one red flag came out and he ran with the leaders for one lap and they interviewed him during the red flag. And he's like, I ran with them for that lap. I can do it. And then all of a sudden now he's <laughs> exactly. been in the, in the top five almost every session and on the podium that race. So all racing is so mental. It just took that one little bit that propelled him to another level. And then Jake Lewis here, who's a name, obviously a big name that's coming in and filling in uh, and has done a nice job as well. Yeah, filling in for Corey Venture. So uh, hopefully he's back soon, he's, but could be out for a while. And uh, Jake Lewis got the call up. It's not easy to come to Moto America race weekend on a bike you've never rode before. And, you know, coming from a bagger and, and a, a 1,000 now back down to Super Sport, it is a 750 now. It's going to be a big jump, big learning curve for him. And he's cer certainly a driver who's a uh, rider who's capable of it. And of course, at the sharp end, Stefano Mesa on pole. Every time in qualifying, somebody went after him. He answered the call. He will be starting up front. Moto America Super Sport coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit Geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. We are a warm-up lap away from the start of Super Sport race number one here at Road America. And this track just looks so amazing. There's not a, literally, Greg, there's not a bump on the place. It's just as good as it can possibly get. So, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a big change for these riders. Road America did the work. They put in uh, a pavement here that is going to last a long time. And uh, they've done a lot of other little revisions to the place as well. <laughs> they have, like, a, a new carousel viewing trail, a new beach viewing area, complete with beach chairs and palm trees. There's new lighting in the paddock. There's some... Uh, Different things around the racetrack that you said you could see yeah. from on board when you rode here Monday, Tuesday of this week. They have some different sculptures around the track that, uh, that you can actually see out there. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting. They've just made it, like I said, they've made it better. Um, this place is packed with people. Uh, the amount of campers and things that are all through the infield. Um, there's just a, a, it's a great viewing track. It's a great place uh, to come. The area up here in Wisconsin. This is a place, I think, Greg, if... If you're a track day guy and you you know you want to click a couple of tracks off your bucket list this has got to be right at the top of that yeah 100 percent this is the only section of the racetrack that didn't get the fresh pavement that's the chicane area and of course in speaking with the great people here at road america they were telling us hey look that's the newest part of the racetrack and plus it's only utilized by the motorcycles right. so either in racing or in the situation of track days the cars don't use it here yeah, that's exactly right. And they did that to slow that kink down that we used to go through fourth gear. Yeah. And then, you know, when you do the track walk now and you go through there, you think, wow, we used to go through this fast kink. So they did that to slow us down. And I th I've said it for all along, it's probably the best place that they've ever built a chicane that is actually very raceable. And the racer who took advantage of this new surface the most is Stefano Mesa. He's on pole on his Kawasaki at a 218.184. Next to Chavi Fours and Ty Scott. Then we have the first of the Yamahas, Josh Hayes there with Teague Hobbs and Maziata, who's riding brilliantly this weekend so far. Michael Gilbert, Jake Lewis uh, filling in for Corey Ventura. We hope you get better, Corey. Carl Soltis, Nassani Davis. And uh, Damian Jagala, local guy from just down the road. Then we have C.J. LaRose, Jason Farrell, who won here last year, Nick Siling, Riveros, uh, Owen Williams, and Schweiger. Back to row seven, Burleson, Al uh, Alex Thermiotis. Airstein's there, Goza, 
Um, Declan Van, uh, I saw him park though, Greg, so I'm, I'm wondering if he's going to be there. I Davis, saw him, yeah. Tropkoff, Munoz, Mallory, uh, Dobbs, Booth, and Brian Mullins. And Justin Bamers there, just starting the, on the back now. You know, Greg, the, the, the big thing here is getting a start. It's, it's actually a little bit uphill. I don't know if you remember, but it's a little bit uphill here. So to get that start uh, is super key here. That guy in the middle, Greg, he said this place is a lot like the European tracks when you spoke to him, didn't he? Yeah, Chavi Forres absolutely loved this place. He had his flying lap, like his fourth lap out. Look for him on that Ducati. He's going to be awfully fast. Josh Hayes going for the all-time win record if he can pull it off. 11 laps, Super Sport race number one. When the lights go out, we're going. And it looks like a good launch from the front row. Stefano Mesa, a little bit sleep at the wheel, but it's going to be Chavi Forez. No, it looks like it's going to be the number 70. So it looks like Ty Scott possibly on that Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki leads us in there. Chavi Forez was looking for a way around. He's going to square off the corner. He'll be in second spot. Mesa with a bit of a start recovery in third. As riders, there's Michael Gilbert on the 55 up the inside. Josh Hayes goes around the outside of him. So Hayes now on the Squid Hunter Yamaha R6 in fourth spot. Crazy at the beginning. Yeah, Josh actually split Gilbert and T. Hobbs as they went down into turn three. Got a little narrow there. Josh got a really good jump from row two. Michael Gilbert as well, as you can see him now going down the inside. He's on the very inside line on that blue and white 55. Hayes is going to outbreak him as they go down into there. He's going to touch Mesa. So Hayes gets into the Mesa just a little bit. That's going to open the door for Gilbert to maybe go through to fourth. As you see them go up underneath the Corvette Bridge, Mesa's going to close down across the front of Gilbert. But out front, the guy out front, Greg, has some pace, especially down through this area. So they're going to have to keep an eye on Forrest and not let him get too far away early. Javi Forrest still racing world endurance as well. Off to Spa in a couple of weeks' time on different tire brand. Still says he's getting used to these Dunlops, but Jay, what he was telling me on his Warhorse HSBK Ducati is that this track is so good right out of the box. First year, the repave with a polymer modified asphalt that he's able to push the front and he just hasn't figured out where the limit is as Josh Hayes slots himself up into second spot. Yeah, so that, here comes Josh Hayes. Yeah, that's the surprise of nobody. Josh does not want to see Forrest leapfrogging at the front. Josh is obviously very good about getting up to speed quickly, but you can see there's a little bit of a gap there that gets pulled from that Ducati to the R6 of Hayes, and he's going to hold off Ty Scott as Mesa's looking up the inside now at Ty Scott. Michael Gilbert still slotting himself there into fifth. Expect to see him start to go forward when they get onto that front straightaway. He's going to have three riders in front of him that are going to be drafting, and I think, unfortunately, Josh, you know, he's got to try to get away from those guys. I think you might see all three of those bikes past Hayes at the end to this straightaway. So far on our timing system during the weekend, Hayes' bike hasn't been the fastest. The 37 has been absolutely ripping. So here comes Mesa. He's in the draft of Josh Hayes. Michael Gilbert there as well, trying to find some space. So the 37 gets around the four. Chavi, though, with still a nice, comfortable lead at the moment. We'll see if they're able to close up out of turn three as they head down another long straightaway towards turn five, which actually tends to be the fastest part of this racetrack. So it's Chavi Forez, number 12, from Spain on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati, Ducati Pedigali B2, one of those motorcycles that had a competitive adjustment wow. this weekend. Mesa just got a really good run out of turn three. I mean, fast out of there and was able to get in that draft. You look back a little bit further in fourth place there, the two riders going back and forth, Ty Scott and Gilbert. Now you can see Carl Soltis also running up onto the back of these two guys. The front three are starting to tie themselves together a little bit. Javi made that big run as you see Jarrett Nassani down. Unfortunately for the Altus Motorsports rider, that GSX-R 750 he is. Now they've closed up. Jason and talking to Javi Forez about this race and how it was going to unfold. His biggest concern is towards the end of the race, making sure, if he can, that he's breaking away from the 37 of Mesa on the Titler Cycles Kawasaki ZX-6R. We know that the Kawasaki ZX-6R is fast, but we also know that Mesa's great on the throttle and he's very small. And Chavi had told me, if we come out of the final corner on the last lap and we're neck and neck, He's going to be able to outrun me to the line. So Forez has that in mind, and he said, I'm going to have to race this race in a different way from the races I've raced so far in the States. Yeah, and Hayes right now, I think it's done a really good job 
I think it was probably encouraging for Josh to be able to hold those guys off down the straightaway. The problem is the end of this lap is so fast. As you come down here into Canada Corner, he's going to have three corners after this and then another big long straight. So for the four to win this race, I think he's going to have to do something pretty special in the middle part of this. So we'll see what he's able to do. But Chobby Forrest is leading. Hannah? Talking to Chavi Forrest, the team did come here for Dunlop's tire test last month. Unfortunately, due to the birth, well, excitingly, due to the birth of his first daughter, he missed out on the test. With that being said, he's, you know, this track wasn't as hard for him to learn here this weekend. He got up to speed rather quickly, so that was definitely beneficial. He said, with the wide open layout and how big this track is, it's more similar to what he's used to having raced over in Europe, so that's been a huge difference for him this weekend so far. His daughter, Jimena. One and a half months old, getting ready to turn two months old. He was telling me, Jay, that there's a possibility that after Brainerd later on in the season, which is, of course, the end of July for us by pit race, Jimena may be coming over to the States and visiting with him while he's racing over well, here. Well, that has to be hard for him to be so far away from uh, from his wife and his, and his newborn as well. So if they can make their way over here uh, in a month's time or so, that's going to be great. You see Michael Gilbert has made the pass on Ty Scott. Those guys are a little bit in danger right now of completely losing this. As you see, Mesa is going to take a shot down the inside of turn five. Chobby Forrest just lets oh, off the wow. lever and uh, you know pulls the lever on a little bit later, rather, gets himself through there. I was down in turn five this morning watching, and Chobby was testing himself every time down in there, and I saw him run straight once or twice, just testing it. And that's what that's that's what that's there for, that runoff time. And uh, you could test yourself down into turn five a lot. So front three guys right now, look at the lap times, right? 219.5, 219.0 for Mesa and at the Hayes 19. The only other two guys in the 19s, actually three guys, uh, you can see Scott and uh, Gilbert and Teague Hobbs. So Chavi Flores continues to lead with about eight and a half laps to go. If you're curious about how this new surface has treated Moto America racers overall, there's been track records broken in many places, but we hearken back to 2017 to Garrett Gerloff when he was here in Supersport. He's got the record at a 217.6. We got close to that in qualifying, but as race pace, a 219 flat so far from Mesa, the fastest lap of the race is Mesa. Looks like he's got a couple of things going on, and when he looks behind him and sees a just an eye full of, it looks like Michael Gilbert on the 55 has worked his way comfortably into fourth around Ty Scott. That, that little mistake that we may have seen there for Mesa could actually help Michael because I think Mesa's got the pace to run these guys back forward. So Gilbert right now on the MG55 bike trying to get himself into this into a spot where he'll be able to sniff the draft. It took him a little bit to get by Ty Scott, but once he's been able to do that, he's been able to hold him off. So, you know, look at this again. You got the two most, really the most experienced guys in the field at the front. Hayes now has just got to start to make a plan of what he wants to do or where he might think he can do something. And uh, Mason's trying to draft up past Hayes right now as they come, and you're going to see him pull out. There's Hayes go up underneath Mesa in that turn eight. Tip of the cap to the Squid Hunter team getting this Yamaha R6 up to speed. Last time by the stripe, Hayes was able to do 156 miles an hour to Chavi Flores, who was getting drafted 154. But all eyes on Mesa on that Kawasaki, 159.8 miles an hour at the top speed. Lucas Oil helicopter provide this outstanding pictures. And a great overhead look at Road America. And it looks like Hayes trying to outbreak the breaking demon of Chavi Forez. And Hayes goes around him as Forez had a look over his shoulder and was like, wait a second, what just happened here? Yeah, but he sneaks back up underneath as Josh got in there just a little bit deeper, ran him out just wide ever so slightly. Now, this is definitely going to help. Uh, Mesa get back right in that mix and he, Mesa he's seasoned let's not forget he's going to watch these two guys hammer on each other for a little bit he's going to be patient it's also going to help Michael Gilbert we're, we're due to have four riders at the front of this if this kind of continues but Josh will take another shot as you can see here on the left hand side of your screen he starts lining himself up to go down the inside of four as and over on the right side of our screen look how wide they are Greg through the middle of the carousel he's got into five ran out over the curb just a little bit and allowed the Ducati to sneak back up underneath him now these guys get into the chicane one at a time. But Hayes will take another shot if he can. It's, it's just a matter of him being able to get in that draft. One of the best things about motorcycle road racing is you see the rider or the pilot working the motorcycle. The different riding styles between Chavi Forez and Josh Hayes completely evident with Forez. As he leans off the right side of the bike, he dips that shoulder into the corner. Hayes more central riding position on the motorcycle. Still able to carry the same speed. 
but just doing it in different ways on different style motorcycles. The Ducati Penigali V2, a 955 twin versus the inline 600cc R6. And there's Michael Gilbert. Man, he's trying so hard. This is such a hard spot for Michael to be in because he's trying to get back up to that draft of these guys. And he's just a little bit off of it right now. As you see the three guys come over the top, Mace will get a double bike draft. He'll be able to suck along in behind Look these two at guys. Josh, Josh Hayes. Hayes goes through. Wow, so wow. Hayes able to draft and pass right by and he'll take over the spot. So now Hayes in his favorite position and that position is leading. Hannah, what you got on the four? Of course it is. Josh Hayes loves to be out front. And despite having never worked with his team here at this track, they did make the announcement that they would be finishing out the season together. They're just working through things as they come up. They did an engine swap overnight, even though nothing was wrong. They're just looking for some more top end speed, trying some new things. They made some adjustments to the engine braking and playing with maps. And all of it seems to be making Josh very comfortable out front. Yeah, it certainly does. And you can see that these bikes are evenly matched, Jay, because it's all getting sucked up and drafting and all kinds of stuff. But Hayes, so good down the hill into turn number five, where Chavi Forrest thought that he was one of the best. Top of our show grade, you touched so much on the, the rules and how they're trying to balance things. Like what we have here, we have four manufacturers all in the top four. So I think that that's, that balance is definitely there. Watching here, 218.7 for Hayes that last time through as he was able to take that lead. And uh, now we're going to see if he starts to splinter this group up. Hayes obviously very good down through here. What he's going to be looking to do right now is try to break away enough to where he will not have to deal with these guys anymore as far as drafting and getting repassed. And this is where that experience comes in for Hayes. He's been around here so many laps, Greg, and knows the idiosyncrasies of this place. But now he's got a whole new thing with the pavement that he's had to get used to to push himself. But he's opened up that gap. And of course, looming off in the distance is the overall race win. Now, Jay, there's some other stuff going on behind this lead group. How about this Geico save? This is Brian Mullins out of Cincinnati, Ohio. On the oh. Wreckers to Checkers, the 66 bike on that Triumph Street Triple. How about that save? That's a big one out of the chicane, no question there. So he's going to be feeling that probably a little bit later on. Wow, great work from our crew to catch that one. I'd like to talk to Brian Mullins about that big save. Up front we go. When Josh Hayes comes across the stripe, it's going to be six laps to go. Starting to spread out ever oh, yeah, so that's... slightly. So it's, I was just going to say, this looks like Josh Hayes in the Superbike days when he split through the field. He always wants to lead, doesn't like to be behind. Chubby Forrest is going to try to draft back by him and slow the four down a little bit. And that's exactly what he's doing as they get down to the braking area of turn one. Chubby Forrest goes back through on Josh Hayes. That lap, a 218-1 for Hayes, pushing his own win. But again, what that did, that splintered it to where these three guys get away, drop Michael Gilbert that time. Michael at a 218-8 but all the first three guys were over half second quicker. So Hayes does the job of eliminating one rider right now from that. As you can see, he is now trying to take another shot of fours as they go down. And Mesa is going to go down the outside of fours as they go down into turn five. Three wide, Greg, and fours wins the breaking battle <laughs> down into there this time. But Hayes doesn't give up too much asphalt, and he'll stay right there. What a race we have in Super Sport race number one here at Road America, the freshly paved five years planning to get the surface to the condition it's in. And this racetrack expected with this new surface to last in excess of 30 years. They've done such incredible work to get it here, including a latex polymer modified asphalt. It's part of the reason coming to this racetrack where we haven't seen, normally when we go to new surfaces, Jay, we see tires just getting eaten alive for the first two years we're there. This is different, not to mention the fact, Jay, as you've experienced, we've had un unseasonably warm conditions here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin for the last couple weeks. The sun's been out, it's yep. been in the 80s, and it's really put a lot of heat into this racetrack, and certainly, Hannah, it's been awesome. It has, Greg, and talking about that smooth pavement for Stefano Mesa, everything's been working really well. They're trying to get the setup dialed in, though. They have so much mechanical grip because the surface is so grippy that it's almost giving the bike a bit of a chatter, but it's been feeling every session throughout the weekend. Stefano did get his first pro win here back in the AMA Supersport days, so he's always really looking forward to coming in this track, especially it being Tytler's home race. It would feel great to give them a good result. 
And Jake, can you explain a little bit more about what chatter is? Yeah, it's, it's the feeling that you're going to get, Greg, when you start to tip a bike in and the front of the motorcycle starts to almost feel like it's bouncing off the ground. Like it doesn't feel settled, it doesn't feel set. And you're starting to tip the bike in the best you can. And it can be a couple of different things as far as the setup of the motorcycle goes. Now, for this particular case, we have a new surface. So these guys are having to try to find how hard they can actually push on this new surface. And that, I think, is a very difficult thing to do. Um, and, and some even said that not riding here ever before like somebody like Chavi Forrest could have been a big advantage for him because he wasn't used to where all the stuff was from the years past Good point so so the thing is as he comes in this is going to be like every track he's probably ridden that's really smooth in Europe and uh, he's just gonna he took a liking to it his first flying lap of the weekend was I believe a 24-2 or 24-1 uh, somewhere in there and so when you look at a four mile long track he was only five seconds off his best time he's going to do for the whole whole weekend so far so 18 flat though that last time by he sets a new lap time to, to start to chase we're really close now to the 17s and what did we qualify at we qualified at a 18 one was mesa so, so we're faster than that faster than that already halfway through the race yeah another good sign of how well these dunlops are holding up on this new surface here at road america super sport race number one four and a half laps to go in this race so far this season we have seen nothing but Chavi Forez standing on top of the podium. We've had three races, including our extended race at Barber Motorsports Park, that was worth double points. So Chavi Forez won it. There's 25 to win, 20 for second, 16 for third. He won it and took home 50 points from that one, plus his first two wins at Road Atlanta. But Hayes has figured out some things through the carousel, and he's right back on the rear tail section of the Spaniard. Yeah, he's really good through the carousel as Josh. And I think what the plan at that point is going to be, you know, last lap wise, he's got to do something to try to balk whoever's in front of him because Josh is so fast through the carousel that he can get up along the left side. Might not show his cards if he doesn't feel he can get away. I feel like Josh did what he, what he was trying to do a few laps ago, take that lead, put his head down. He set a blistering time at 18-1 on his own, pushing his own win, and he still wasn't able to get away. You can see how early Josh getting on the gas here getting that bike just a little bit sideways. That's not going to affect him. And Chavi Forrest has a look over his shoulder to see, did I pull away at all? And he has not. And all the while, Greg, you got Mesa sitting there kind of watching it. I know he's pushing, but he's going to be watching. He's got a good run this time on Josh. They come down the front straightaway. Here comes Mesa, Titler Cycles, Kawasaki ZX-6R against the Squid Hunter Yamaha R6. Those are part of our older generation bikes, I guess you could say as opposed to the next generation bike that's leading. So there goes Mesa into second spot. The advantage for Hayes in this particular situation is the speed of that Kawasaki. And we'll see if, oh, see, Hayes just has, seems to be a little bit more roll speed through the corner. Left part of your screen, your battle for first. Right part of your screen, your battle for ninth place. So let's see, we have Maziato on the well, yeah, so we have Anthony Maziato on the 23. You have Blake Davis on the 22 and CJ LaRoche on the 20. Yeah, teammates are Maziato and uh, LaRoche, I believe. So they're getting a good look at Blake Davis, our Twins Cup champion. Not running Twins Cup here this weekend on that 22. So the N2 team has got him on that R6. We knew earlier in the year we saw a press release that, that would be happening. So, you know, this is a great opportunity for Blake to get his feet wet in our Super Sport class. On the weekends that he's not running Twins Cup, Greg, he's going to be riding this R6. And we saw him uh, already, I think, this year um, on that bike as well. So we'll be able to, you know, he's, gonna, he's battling with a couple guys. Maziato, who's been extremely fast this weekend. I'm a little bit surprised right now to see Anthony um, battling for ninth because we saw him qualify a little bit further up the grid. So maybe something in the beginning of the race could have happened and got him back there a little bit as we get back to the front three. You can keep an eye on that battle left part of your screen is our scoring pylon and you can keep an eye on your favorite riders obviously between them is Michael Gilbert who had closed the gap and starting to drift back. He's still two and a half seconds ahead of Teague Hobbs who's ahead of Ty Scott, Carl Sotis in seventh and Jake Lewis who is racing the tall rider sitting at 200 over 200 pounds. Jake Lewis on a GSXR 750 this weekend back in super sport action on the Disrupt Racing GSXR 600. So, Chavi Forez continues to lead the way. Jay, let's take a look at the replay on the left part of your screen. Well, it's gonna be Mesa this time, just getting a little bit loose, I think, on the exit. But again, Greg, that's not even something he'll even hardly recognize. He'll just keep his head down. The thing I'm starting to, to worry about a little bit here, as you can see, 
the speed at the front right now. The two guys, 18-5, 18-2. Josh Hayes, 18-7. So, again, we'll keep an eye on it, but Fours is able to push forward and keep these guys racing in the 18s and uh, takes a long look over his shoulder. That really actually gave Mesa a little bit of room and even Josh. So Mesa's going to be able to draft up with this Ducati now. And I and look at how good Josh got out of turn three. Look, Mesa goes by on the exit. So four is to me just not a little bit slow out of three. And we've seen both Mesa and Hayes be able to drive up. Josh was a little bit far back when they were going down into the turn 14 this lap before. And now he slotted himself right back up in the second. Seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah. Josh Hayes, the veteran, coming towards the front. All three of these riders on the R8 spec Dunlop tire. That is like a medium plus, Jay, so it's one of the harder options. But between Mesa, Hayes, and Forez, all these three riders, they're on different. So Hayes has the softest, the R3 front. Then Forez has an R5, kind of a medium compound. And then the R7 front for Mesa. So that could be play into some of this as well. Because what's so interesting, Jason, is because there's no bumps at this racetrack anymore, it was thought that these riders at this speed push the front so incredibly hard as Hayes oh, goes up the inside of the carousel. He's so, fa he's so fast there. I mean, he just, just what literally a pass. Is so fast. There's something you wouldn't see on the old track very no, often. No, you would definitely not see that on the old track. And then there's just so much grip there. And Josh has so much corner speed down through there. And you can see he's trying his best to get out of that corner as hard as he can. Forrest back in the draft, going to move over to the left of Hayes and go back past that R6 as they head down to Canada Corner. That probably surprised Forrest quite a bit. But we We've seen throughout the race how much speed Josh has in that carousel turn. For him to be able to turn the bike and just roll up underneath Forrest there, like that, Greg, shows how much confidence he has. And you can see Forrest just runs it out a little bit, and Hayes just sees that opening and is able to just pull the pin on the R6, get it down to the bottom up along that curbing and drive out and, uh, and just make that pass look relatively easy, but it's a big commitment to do that. Especially for someone like Hayes, who's been here for so many years, been at Road America and won here so many times, he had to really adjust his thinking and say, you know what, I think I can give it a go through the carousel. Exactly right. Now that's the first lap we've seen. 19-3 there, 19-4 for Mesa, 18-9 for Hayes. Hayes actually ran the fast lap because he was a bit behind, obviously, coming down the front straightaway last time and then the two guys in front of him slowed themselves up just a little and uh but now greg i mean look you're looking at about one and a half laps everybody's kind of shown their cards a little bit i know what the number four is thinking he wants to leave and lead into turn five on the last lap so it'll be interesting to see if he takes a shot this time or if he actually waits until the next time by and you can see just like josh he always loves to lead fours lets off the lever again but I think the next lap, I don't think it's going to be as nice. I think Hayes will make a big push to run down the inside of Chavi Fours on the last lap now. As long as he keeps in touch. And we know, even if he loses a little bit here, going through turn seven and even down into eight, the R6 is working a little bit better to me, it looks like, than the Ducati through that area. But Hayes kind of threw a shot early, and Fores looks like he is just on it right now, trying to get a little bit of a gap, but here's where Hayes shines. Into the carousel they go. Look at that Yamaha R6 and the corner speed. And again, Forrest just runs it out a little wide, almost squaring it up a little bit. But again, there's a lot of modulation as you start to kind of modulate your throttle on the way in. And then as you get about halfway to three quarters through, Greg, the, the neatest thing about the track now is you can actually start to open the gas more and more and more. Those guys are rolling through there in fourth gear. So for the Ducati, you know it's going to be well into the torque curve. And for the, for the R6, going to be buzzing maybe just a little bit more. So Forrest able to lead out of the chicane. And I think now the big thing here is going to be where Mesa plays into this. I can see Mesa possibly drafting Josh down the front straightaway. And uh, that could throw a wrench into things, especially when they get down to turn five. Other than if Hayes can double bike draft going down into five, I think that that's going to be his plan to try to get by both of these guys. Onto the front straightaway. White flag will be flying at the top of the hill. Forez with a nice little advantage on the 12th. That's the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati Pentagali V2. There goes Mesa, just like you predicted, Jason. On the Tyler Cycle Kawasaki ZX6R, Josh Hayes on that Squid Hunter Yamaha R6. Final lap, here we go. And that can work well for Josh because I think both the riders in second and third are a little bit better than Chavi when they get down here into turn three, especially on the drive out, as you're going to see the 37 and the four will get good runs out of here. And you can see Josh 
Coming out of there, he's going to get a double bike draft. He's a little bit too far back now, though, Greg. So I'm not sure exactly if Josh made a small mistake. But Mace is the one now that will pull over to the left and try to outbreak Chavi Forrest into turn five. Now, nah, Forrest is just too good, isn't he, down he's there? He's too good. You can see Mesa trying to snatch that lever. You can hear a little bit of tire chirping as they head down into there. As Mesa, the best split of the race in sector number one. This track divided up into multiple sectors. And we can see in our timing and scoring screen that Mesa is going all out. Hayes is still there, but just a little out of touch. But he lost six tenths to Mesa in that first split to the four. So we'll have to see if Josh can close that gap back up. The spots that I felt that Hayes could maybe do something are passed now other than the chicane. And he's not going to be close enough to do anything with these two in the chicane. Now is Mesa on this tight line thinking about trying to do something with Forrest. He's not close enough to do it. And he's not really close enough, Greg, to do anything on the brakes going into the chicane as Josh draws back up on the back of them after going through the carousel. This is where Chavi Forrest starts to shine, and he needs to because he's been thinking about this all day. If I have the 37 behind me, I need to have a bit of a gap as I get closer to driving onto the front straightaway. But Mesa is putting in an unbelievable lap. Last sector, fastest sector by Chavi Forrest, matched by Mesa and Hayes. The speed on this final lap is incredible as they navigate the last couple of corners. Forrest continues to lead, but Stefano Mesa has got a plan in his head. Man, man, Forrest is so fast to that left. Look how much he just pulled away. He opens up the last corner, Greg. Now it's all about controlling that apex speed, but the Ducati on the gas early. Oh. It's going to take a big effort for Mesa. Mesa spun up. He had a mistake. Here comes Forrest. He's going up the hill. He's deep into the tuck. The checkered flag awaits, and it's going to be four in a row for Chavi Forez. A 117-217, 7-0-1 for Mesa on the last lap. And that can't quite get it done. But Mesa on the final lap, trying to win the race, ends up breaking the lap record. Super Sport lap record set all the way back in 2017 by Garrett Gerloff, a 217.701. But at the end of the day, it's going to be Chavi Forez. Four race wins in his Moto America debut. Incredible. Top three guys all do the fastest laps of their race on the last lap because also Chavi Forez 17 9 and Hayes goes 18 1. Wow. Just incredible. It's not often that we see a fastest lap set in a class in the race overall. But now Mesa in second place on the podium. I'm sure. He's disappointed not to win it, but at least he can sit back and say, I have the fastest lap on a super sport bike ever done around Road America. Yeah. And he does it on the last lap, Jay. I mean, Amazing. how good do these tires hold up? This, yeah. this racetrack is incredible. Yeah, no, and it just makes for good, close, hard racing. And uh, those three guys put on a great show for us. I just got word that Chavi Forrest is the first rider to win his first four Moto America races ever. So you can see he's going to be pretty happy here. He's stopping down for the fans in turn five. Make sure his bike doesn't fall over. You know, <laughs> if it's going to do it, you might as well do it there rather than uh, done in a race. But, yeah, he's going to go show, uh, show the fans some love here. Javi Forez, when I talked to him about the possibility of not winning this race, I said, are you in it for the championship for this particular round or are you in it to win races? And he said, I came here to win races. Now, unfortunately, he can't get the... Oh, <laughs> Javi. He's getting rejected by the fans. Yeah. And uh, he pulls down a little bit further. He can get by that fence and throw some because I think they're just going to get to the grass anyway. So, anyways, <laughs> it's a, the, the intent was nice. Hey, all right. There's yeah, there, some. There, yeah, there, there we go. Maybe one of the photographers around the track. <laughs> oh, so the fan went over the fence. Hey, it shows you how great the crowd is here in Wisconsin. Not everybody bailing over to the racetrack because we got more racing later on today. But we're going to step away and we come back. We're going to talk to Chavi about that race. Can't wait to hear from him. Well, we can't wait to hear either. And I'll tell you what, Roger, one thing that kind of impresses me here, they made that adjustment. And, uh, you know, earlier, everybody was saying the Ducati in particular was just going to run away from everybody. At this track, that Yamaha was able to stay there. You can still see the, how the Ducati could get out of the corners a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, some of that was Josh Hayes' talent as well. But I was able to stay in the fight. What a race. Yeah, what a race. And actually, last year here, it looked like the Suzuki was the strongest, you know, with, with Tyler Scott kind of setting behind Josh Heron there. And all the bikes, I think, 
really looked equal. I mean, we've seen Josh Hayes make some uh, passes on the front straight. It still looked like the Ducati was, was strong. And then uh, also Stefano Mace's bike uh, looked, you know, personally, I mean, it looked the strongest, but also he's a little guy. And I think that yep. helps and just looked like, uh, looked like it was even and everybody, th that whole race, it just seemed like some parts of the track, some guys were better than others. And then at the, end of the lap they just ended up together every lap and stefano got it got within a tenth of the track record on that last lap with a, a bobble big one coming out of 14 up the hill if he wouldn't have had that he may have had something here for this guy i think that bobble might have cost him yeah i mean he just killed his drive and he still you could see you know the last little bit he yeah. was in that draft and he was starting to come yeah, it was so, so close. You know, folks, hey, we just want to let everybody here at Road America, uh, you know, make sure you're aware of something, that at the uh, from 4 to 7 today, the Mission Foods Mini Cup, which is where the racers uh, get their true starts. These young kids out there on these great little bikes, and they eventually work their way into Junior Cup and eventually up into the, uh, the uh, faster bikes. Uh, they are racing from 4 to 7 today uh, right into the evening. So when we're done with the big bikes, on the big track, there's still racing to be seen. You don't want to miss it. Just head over to the Motorplex and watch the Mission Foods Mini Cup. That'll be running until at least 7 o'clock tonight. So uh, that's going to be uh, a lot of fun. Make sure you check that out. Roger, I know you've popped over there yeah. to watch them. I'm going to uh, try to get over there tonight. Last night I didn't get there, and Tom uh, was watching the two up with Elizabeth. So tonight I'm hoping to get there in time to check them out. Yeah, it should be great fun. And it's about time for us to get back over to you. Greg and Jason, and hear from our winners. Chavi Forez, four race wins in a row in his debut in Moto America. By the way, Jason, this guy is living a dream. He came to Atlanta in 2004 and always wanted to race here. And when he finally got his dream realized, Jason, this is what's happening. What a race we had. Less than 300, three tenths of a second victory over Mesa. Hayes right there in the mix. Great job by Teague Hobbs to get around Michael really Gilbert, nice the first there, of our yeah. Suzuki's. You can see the amount of GSXRs we have there. Ty Scott, Carl Sotis, and Jake Lewis. For a guy who's over 200 pounds and just coming into super sport, from, he's gonna love you for that. Uh, well, he's, he's gonna he love told, you for he that. He told me eighth place. I think <laughs> is great. Maziato in ninth spot as well. So Jay, just I mean, incredible to see the fastest lap in the lap broken on the last lap. But now is our opportunity to get down to victory lane with Hannah. Greg, as you mentioned, Javi Fares is the first rider in the history of Moto America upon his debut to win his first four races ever in the series, and that is an incredible feat. Take us through that race, because Josh Hayes and Stefano Mesa were putting some pressure on you throughout. That's good to know. Uh, yeah, the, the race was so much fun. I mean, I didn't expect Josh staying uh, with us, but uh, honestly, he's always impressing uh, everyone. He had a massive uh, pace on the on the midsection when 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 the Yamaha is uh, on the strongest point. But I said I, I can't let him uh, lead the race because uh, he's gonna put me miles away. So I, I I tried to stay leading the race all the time. I was a little bit afraid of Mesa because the, his bike is quite fast. But uh, on the last lap I decided to to change a little bit the rhythm. I did the fastest lap of the race on the last lap. So uh, super happy. Um, I love this track. I am enjoying a lot. So hopefully tomorrow we can repeat. Knowing how important the draft is here and knowing riders, especially with the experience of Josh Hayes and Stefano Mesa, was first place the position that you wanted to be in coming across the line or were you worried that maybe you were going to have to block your line and not let them by? Yeah, that's what I decided to push the last lap uh, like a hell, no? to, in order to, to make some gap with uh, Stefano. And I think uh, I did like 0 0.5 and uh, it was enough to don't, to don't be passed by him. So. Um, we need to fix something on the bike, especially to be a little bit more strong on the brakes. But anyway, I'm enjoying this uh, first victory, and uh, hopefully we can, we can try tomorrow again. Congrats to Xavi for his second place today. Stefano Mesa dicing it up out there with some seriously fast guys. You were in great company. You were behind both Josh Hayes for a little while and Xavi Forrest. Was there anything that you were able to learn that maybe will help you tomorrow against them? Yeah, definitely. You know, every time you're following these guys, you're always learning. It's constantly learning. Uh, it's a pleasure battling with these guys, you know. Uh, 
finishing second to Xavi is not too bad for me, you know. So uh, I thought we had the pace. I did a little mistake right there in the last lap, but my whole Tyler's crew delivered a whole a perfect bike for me. I think I thought we had a great race. We had the fastest lap of the of the race, so we're happy with that. And hopefully tomorrow we can bring it to them. Looking to get a win here for Titlers at their home race. You know, back to the drawing board tonight. What is the strategy? Yeah, definitely. We want to get a win for the for the for the team. Uh, we're just gonna go back and work. That's what we've been doing. Uh, we've been getting more acclimated. The mechanics and me, Michael, uh, Zeki, Steven, we're all been working together pretty good. So uh, we're just gonna keep building. You know, it's a long season. We've been solid all season, and uh, as long as we're we're there and solid, we're happy. A very happy Stefano Mesa in second place today, guys. It's so good to have him full time here. Uh, and it is it, all the years we talked about it. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not sure he realizes that uh, that track record. But let's get right back down to Hannah, who has Josh Hayes, who was oh so close. A fantastic last lap for Josh Hayes. What was going through your head there? What was the strategy? <laughs> I drained the tank. I was having so much fun. I was fighting as hard as I could. And uh, that last lap, I had to make up a little ground a few times. I tried two and two, and I made a mistake and ran wide. So I just kept trying to stay vigilant through the infield and hope that they came back to me. And I saw one or two small mistakes, but it was just never enough. And uh, I knew I, there was no chance I was going to get Stefano to the line. But maybe if everything went perfect, I had a shot at Chavi if I could stay close enough. But there's just a, a couple areas where we just need a little bit more jump. And uh, if we could figure that out, we can make it really difficult for them. I'm trying to just make it exciting otherwise and hang in there and make sure the rest of the group doesn't run me down. So. Squid Hunter gave me a great bike again. I'm so happy to be back on the podium. I, uh, man, I, in my career, this is probably as hard as I've ever ridden. I am having so much fun. I'm digging in as hard as I can. I'm riding pretty darn good, and I'm really enjoying myself. So hopefully we can figure out a few little things and uh, get an advantage somewhere other than the carousel where I can take advantage of it. And, um, yeah, we'll keep fighting. That's my favorite part. I love being in the fight. I'm glad I was there to the finish line with those boys. And uh, that's the goal every weekend. And we'll take a win if it comes our way. Otherwise, we'll just keep fighting. You've got a lot of laps around this track, but not with this team and not with this motorcycle. How much of a factor is that? <laughs> I, 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 oh, actually, you know what? I raced a 619 here. But, uh, you know, the surface really threw a, a wrench in the program. Like, and it's so good. You see how the lap times are going. But it's really scary to go crazy fast because there's just a lack of feel. It's so pool table smooth. And so you get in there, and it's like everything's good. And then the mistake happens fast. It catches you off guard. And it makes you kind of leery to go back in there again quite like that. But. Um, I definitely learned a few things riding around with these guys, and uh, we'll see what we can come up with for tomorrow. Josh Hayes still trying to find the limit, but having a great time doing it. Yeah, and I mean, the podium is always great, but we also know that just out there looming is race win number 87 right overall there. for all classes, and he definitely wants to get it done. But tip of the cap to Chavi Flores. I mean, coming in the States and just doing what he's doing on a bike that was vacated by Josh Heron, who went on to Superbike. We'll have more coverage from Supersport race number one here in a moment. I'll tell you what, Roger, uh, in Moto America has uh, just seen a truly international podium up there, haven't they? A Spaniard wins it. A uh, gentleman from Colombia in second and an American there in third. And all of them, look at that, just Ben Seration talking about how much fun they were having and getting ready for the actual trophy presentations. Uh, that'll be unfolding. And there goes Josh Hayes up onto the podium. Uh, man, he gave it his all. He did. And, and you know, talk, we talked a lot about the next-gen rules this year and how it's changed, starting last year, actually, even though they made some changes here. But we got Ducati first, Kawasaki second, Yamaha third, Suzuki fourth. I mean, you got all the brands pretty much in the in the top four. So it looks like they're doing a good job with the, the, the balancing the rules. But with, the, you know, back to your question about Josh, he put himself in that right spot. He was right there and he was fighting and knew where he was strong at and kind of knows that, you know, he needs to be able to be stronger at different parts of the track to be able to, to make the pass. And hopefully, you know, I think his goal would be to try to make the break. Yeah, and I mean, he was just glued through the carousel, wasn't he? I mean, it was just, you know, remarkable. And I think uh, I think that you saw um, Stefano actually learn from that. And uh, when he attacked on Chavi in that last lap, he ran him tight in that in that uh, carousel. And I think for Chavi, he'll probably watch the race tonight or his team is going to tell him that he's entering the carousel 
way wider than the other guys right. and you know kind of doing it different and maybe something in the warm up he can possibly you know make a few changes to them I mean, i know i hate to say make some changes when you win the race and <laughs> go as fast as he did but yeah. you could obviously see the guys close up the gap through there and he actually got passed you know through there so that's a one part of the track where i feel like he could uh, definitely get a little bit better and then out of turn three josh was extremely strong out oh of there man as well. he, he rolled speed through there didn't he and you know the thing is i've 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 talked about it before. Racers, racers are are greedy by nature. You have to be to want to get to the front, and uh, I'm sure Chavi will go. Oh, really? If I can find more speed there, I'm going to give it a go. So, uh, and I a absolutely going to do it. And uh, we've got a lot more yet to come here. We've got super bikes coming. We got Mission King of the Baggers coming. We've got Royal Enfield first race, and don't forget, we want to mention it again to everybody here uh, over at the Motorplex, uh, the Mission Foods Mini Cup over at the Go Kart Track. Uh, they have some fabulous racing in this Mission Foods Mini Cup racing. So if you just can't get enough of it and you want to see some of the future stars of Moto America uh, learning their craft, uh, head on over there. Watch these guys on these little bikes and gals uh, really putting on a show. So remember to do that tonight uh, before you, uh, you leave. And uh, we, as I said, though, lots of racing yet to come. It's going to be super bikes coming up uh, after this. But more to come here in our coverage of Supersport here at America's National Park of Speed. We're going to head back over to Greg and Jason as they'll bring it home here at Road America. Moto America Super Sport coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. Xavi Forez enjoying the top step of the podium yet again. That's the only place he's been since he started racing here in Road America. Jay, we had a ton of passes, as we expect, at Road America. Where do you start? Josh Hayes goes up the inside of turn eight over Mesa here. He has a shot at going down the inside of Xavi Forez, and this is one of the spots. You can see that little bit of chatter that you talked about in the broadcast, even, on the front of the four, but Xavi Forez was, was able to square him back up and go by. Here Hayes drafts by Forrest on the front straightaway. And this was the lap that he'd actually pull. You see a fourth bike in the back there, because Michael Gilbert was there. He went 18-1 that lap, and kind of they got away from Michael. A little bit later on, Mesa goes through on Hayes, and then almost three wide as they went down into here. This, I believe, was about two laps to go, uh, two and a half or so. And then we're going to see Josh Hayes pull off. Really, really nice move here. He's able to cut that R6 back. Up underneath Forrest, you see that Forrest just, just flinch a little bit there. Wasn't really expecting that. Forrest was able to draft right back by though as they came out of that chicane. And then it really was a, a match of who was going to do what. Mesa on the white flag went through on Hayes. You heard Josh say he made a mistake. We kind of we kind of thought he did, but we didn't actually see it. And uh, Forrest wins again. What a great race! But there's more going on, so let's get down to Hannah. Well, Michael Gilbert is certainly finding his footing, settling back into a real rhythm here and a fifth place finish on the day. Got caught right at the line, but you told me earlier when we spoke that you're feeling quite a lot better than you felt since you've returned from your injury. So despite those new balance of power regulations, what is it that's just really working for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's a combination of a lot of little things. You know, I'm getting healthier as we go on. Uh, readapting to the GSXR and the Supersport platform and then my whole team you know it's a whole new crew of guys to me everyone's starting to jive everyone's starting to click and we're starting to put all the pieces together so it's not one thing in particular but we're all just um, we're working hard and, and putting the pieces together and the results and the lap times are coming and we'll uh, we'll keep doing the same thing one of those pieces is just really working on your fitness you know you said you're feeling more comfortable physically on the bike what is it that you've been doing to prepare you uh, just a lot of work you know uh, I, I I live a normal life with a real full-time job, so I'm up really early in the mornings and at the gym and on the bicycle at lunch and on the bicycle after work. So um, just trying to put the consistency in. That's that's really the main thing about it. And just, you know, put it all together, do a little bit of super motoing and get some time under me. A great result for Michael Gilbert, who wears many hats on any given race weekend, guys. Yeah, and he was the second of our GSXR finishers. Teague Hobbs, Jason, Vision Wheel, and Star Suzuki was in fourth after this race doing a great job on his own, but it was his teammate Ty Scott who got the early lead. It was, and you can see Forrest made quick work of Ty. Ty kind of started just to go backwards a little bit, and then uh, Josh Hayes and Mesa started being the two guys that wanted to take the fight to Chavi Forrest as we kind of had expected, and 
You can see here in that shot, we got four riders. That is Michael Gilbert, who Hannah just spoke to. He was there for uh, probably the first five, six laps. And then when Hayes actually took to the lead, uh, when he went past Forrest down the front straightaway, this, this pass here, this lap that he put down, he didn't, he wasn't touched. He went 18-1 that lap. That turned it into a three-rider battle. Forrest went up underneath him there. Mesa and Hayes were continuously chasing. All three riders were really good in different areas. Forrest was really strong, obviously, under braking down into five and other spots. You heard Josh talk about how good he was in the carousel. This is proof of that here as he cuts it back. Mesa was just kind of good everywhere. Uh, he could stay with these guys. He could run with them. But he just didn't quite have it at the end. And, you know, for him to go 17-7 on the last lap shows that the, the pace is there. But he made a small mistake coming out of the last corner. And that was enough to give Forrest enough room to where he wasn't going to get drafted. What a race. Is the game over the hill and uncontested for one, two, and three. And the Warhorse Horse HSBK Racing Team celebrates with their rider, Chavi Forrest. You want to know what a perfect four races with double race looks like 125 points were the total maximum Javi Forrest has 32 over Mesa and 55 over Hayes Ty Scott and Michael Gilbert right there in the mix as well they're battling it out for fourth so what an incredible race we had here in super sport race number one at Road America on a freshly paved racetrack a track record was broken in the race we can't wait to see it happen all over again tomorrow for Hannah and Jason, I'm Greg. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you for Super Sport Race 2.